Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 516, Women's Voice and Testosterone Pellets, Not What You Think. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moppin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moppin's office is currently accepting new patients. There is a myth uh, actually, I was talking to recently to another physician in the St. Louis area mm-hmm. who does the same focal practice that you do. Mm-hmm. She practices testosterone hormone replacement. But she doesn't use pellets. She doesn't use pellets. She doesn't believe in them. She thinks that the dosages for women are too high. It mm-hmm. makes them like men, and they have men's <laughs> issues if they have too high a testosterone dose. And one of the things that she said to me in our conversation was, uh, their voice will change if, if I give them too much testosterone. That's what ignorance does. It t- makes well, you say things that, that you just assume or you've heard. I, I don't know about her ignorance level. What I know is she's a physician who runs a practice. No, I mean ignorance of pellets, and that was what she was talking about, pellets. She was referencing that, yes. Yeah, so, But my concern, and what we want to talk about today, is whether or not women who get testosterone go through that kind of voice change and mm-hmm. and and how can we say one way or the other i mean mm-hmm. is it just anecdotal do i just do i listen to you and i think boy your voice has changed you know is it because you're 65 is it because mm-hmm. you're uh you put on weight is it because you lost weight i mean how, what causes well there are a lot there are a lot of reasons to have your voice go up or down uh-huh my voice hasn't changed since i was pregnant and had my daughter, and I was 30 then, I can't, I haven't been able to sing since then. Now, I don't know what that was about, swelling of the of the vocal cords or something well, like you, that. When you say that, do you mean you physically cannot sing a song, or you mean people complain when you sing, no, and I the neighbors complain? It, I, don't, I can't, I, it, my voice cracks, but it also is not carrying a tune. It doesn't, I can hear that I'm not carrying a tune, like I, I used to be, have, voice lessons and be able to sing beautifully. And now, ever since then, I can't. Well, see, I've never been able to sing. When I was in junior high school and had to take choir, Mm -hmm. the choir instructor told me, when we do a performance, like the Christmas concert, Mm -hmm. you just lip sync. Don't sing out loud. because. But you have a nice baritone. Uh, Boys, well, when I was 12 so, and 13, I'm not sure that I did. Well, that's true. But, but when you're 12 rate, and 13, that's rate, when men are changing their voice. Yeah. So, so that's just when their testosterone's kicking that's in. That's right, and yeah. that's when, and they should be changing their voice. But there's many factors that change your voice. One is how much fluid is in your vocal cords. I mean, if you're dehydrated, your voice will be different. Okay. Um, if you are, if you've had inflammation, or you're sick, or you have a virus, that changes your voice. If you're a smoker, permanently that or temporarily. Your voice. Oh, temporarily. And all okay. of these things are temporary. Your voice is very uh, labile. It can, it can change with the circumstance. Uh, if you've had trauma to your neck, um, like being thrown from a horse and dragged around with, by the reins, yeah. that's going to make your voice different because you've had trauma to the vocal cords. Right. And, and that's going to change the length of them, the thickness. It's going to inflame them for a period of time. That doesn't necessarily resolve. But, but... Having said that, there's many other things that can cause, I mean, estrogen has, elevates the voice. Um, progesterone has some effects on the voice, which I think is what happened when I was pregnant, that I had a high progesterone level. And, mm-hmm. and I think that may have affected the, the uh, width or the, or, or the tension on the vocal cords. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said that, I'd much rather have my daughter than my voice. <laughs> well, you know, and and you know, you know, so, and if people are given that choice, if if you come in and say straight up, this is likely to happen, but you're trying to get pregnant, you're not able to, but you can get a baby, but you may have this cost. People say, absolutely, I'll pay that cost today. Mm-hmm. It's it's when they discover it later that they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that would happen. Right. That's a concern. Right, and so and I do hear from people. You know, I I want to know if they're singers. 
because I can reassure them. So you ask women in particular that are coming in, Mm -hmm. do you use your voice professionally? Mm -hmm. Are you an announcer on radio Mm -hmm. and television? Are you an actress? Are you Mm -hmm. a singer? Because there may be a conversation we need to have. Well, partially because I don't want them to be fearful. Okay. Because they've already heard. Because they've heard this. That yes. This is going to happen, right. and even if, even if in their case, one out of a ten thousand, they had a change that they could perceive, uh-huh. either higher or lower on their voice, that might affect what they do, and so I have to say, and then I have to reassure them that yes, it is reversible. Now, I'll tell you that they that I've had people probably let I can count them on one hand in eighteen years say that they could hear a change in their voice or that they use their voice for broadcasting or something and they could notice that change. I couldn't notice it. You know and what? Studies. They, they went to ENTs yeah. and the ENT said, that's it. It's forever. You're done. You know, I can't believe you did that. You know, they, they don't know. The ENTs should know. They should know that this is reversible. They should read their articles. They should read the research because the research says it's reversible. If you haven't heard yourself recorded, mm-hmm. you won't recognize your voice the first time you hear yourself recorded. It doesn't sound like us. Because of the, the way we hear, mm-hmm. the sound vibrations that are, are structured around the bones in our ears and our face, changes what we hear in our head. What, what I hear when I talk isn't what you hear when I talk. Mm-hmm. So if I use a device like a, a tape recorder mm-hmm. and I speak into that and I listen to that, I'm going to have to learn to recognize that's my recorded voice. Do mm-hmm. uh, you hear somebody on a phone message? You know, remember, remember years ago when they first came out with those phone uh, message machines and they had two tapes? Yeah. And one was the mm-hmm. outgoing tape. You know, mm-hmm. Hello, no one's home right now to take your call. And, <laughs> and then please leave a message. Uh, people were always astonished that that's what they sounded like. Mm-hmm. And now the technology has changed and we all kind of have exposure we to it. We may hear it and more. We can hear it on our right. Phone. We hear it on our phone. We, but it still isn't what you hear in your head. Mm-hmm. So That's true. The, uh, and, and then there's one more factor I wanted to mention about voice changes. Sometimes you can get nodules on your voice mm-hmm. from stress. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you scream too mm-hmm. loud, if you talk at too high a pitch, if you strain your voice for mm-hmm. any number of reasons, mm-hmm. you can damage your vocal cords. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you have to have surgery. Those nodules have to be lasered off. Uh, you can get HPV on your vocal cords, too. So HPV is, is one of the human viruses. Papillovir- papilloma virus, yeah. which causes cervical cancer. It can cause cancer of the vocal cords. So that is a possibility. That's, something, that's the only reason I would send somebody to the ENT is look at the vocal cords, make sure they're normal, right. and make sure there's nothing else going on. Uh-huh. Not because I think they're going to do something about about right. their voice change, which I don't hear, you know, but they're going to they're but, going to to actually make sure there's no pathology going on there, which there could be. And those are normal things that can happen over the course of your life as you grow, as you mature, as you develop. As women get older, their voice goes down. I mean, their voice lowers. They say that in this in this research. And, and that is because their uh, their larynx changes shape because of the lack of estrogen. It happens at menopause. Okay. So if they don't replace estrogen, does keep your voice in the female <laughs> oh <my>. range. <laughs> I haven't given you any estrogen. No, I know. So, um, but it does it does elevate the the pitch. So your current favorite research scientist, Dr. Yes. Deborah Glaser. I, I'm going to send her. I'm going to send Rebecca her Glaser. flowers and and chocolates because, she, honest to God, she has done so much found research this that volume I volume of research that supports yeah. almost everything that you do. Mm-hmm. That you had other places, uh, anecdotally and in your own practice, you had done the research, but mm-hmm. you found another scientist out there that's saying, "Hey guys, here's the data." And so exactly she took how I say. the question of women's voice changes. Mm-hmm. And said, what does testosterone have to do with that, if Mm -hmm. anything? Mm -hmm. And she said, we need to find an external measure of these women's voices. So she got a a group of women that agreed to participate in the study. And she had them record three specific pre-written sentences, two different sentences and a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And she had them read them consistently every time they came in. So when they first started, Here's mm-hmm. your natural, non-testosteronized voice. This is what you sound like. 
And then they, they put that through a machine that measures frequency. And so when you, when you see these little machine, like, uh, sound recording things on a TV or something, you get the spike lines that go up and down. Mm -hmm. it, it, the frequency, the height of the incline on that measures the frequency high and low. And so as, as the frequency I increases... I never thought that through. I read this whole article and I never really thought that through. So that's what they the see graphs. visually when they see the graph. <laughs> and and get, the more it stretches out, brain. has to do with the tone quality. Yeah, and, right. and so <laughs> as it vibrates, it frequency is there mm -hmm. so they can take a picture of that graph mm -hmm. and compare it every time you come in and and overlay it and know exactly whether or not your mm -hmm. voice has changed mm -hmm. and so you come in and say oh my voice has changed they say well we, we got these three graphs here that we look at and all three of these these things that you read are registering just perfect overlays so no your voice hasn't changed it's one of those things that perception of ourselves is not always the same as an objective measurement right and I, I, I mean, it's the same way I do l blood tests, but that's not the center of how I manage people. I manage people basically by their symptoms, mm -hmm. but I have to have the blood test to just basically have some kind of objective measurement. And I know the blood tests for testosterone aren't necessarily the best and they're often wrong and I don't care. I just need to have some objective measurement. Now, this type of measurement is exacting. <laughs> Are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? Yeah, yeah, right. No, but I mean, I mean, this is a very, a very intense kind of measurement that she used, and she used specialists yeah. in speech. Right. And she also used the sentences, paragraphs, and what? There I think there were two third. different sentences and a paragraph. And the paragraph. But they, were, they involved all the different consonants, all the different vowels. You had to say certain things that they could measure, like your your bilabial fricative. You know what what comes out of your mouth? How does it pop? The fricative. The fricative. <laughs> uh, and then they they was. run those through the the sound machines <laughs> and uh -huh. graph them, and they can show you. So rain, rainbow bridge that we all know if we have pets is it's it's a poem about your pet going on to. Crossing that to rainbow bridge. Crossing, into yeah, and waiting for heaven. you ah. for when you you get there. Okay. So it is that that's what they that's what okay. that meant when she said they had they read the Rainbow Bridge. Well, that was that has all of the sounds. My that wife they was needed. threatening to read that for me the other day. Yeah. Well, I know you, you <laughs> probably deserved it. So um, this is this is this is what they had them read because speech specialists. I mean, she admits this is not her area. She right. got speech specialists into tell her how to measure pitch right. on these patients. And she measured them before, during, and after they were on these testosterone pellets. Yeah. And lo and behold, no one's pitch went down. And a few people with the highest testosterone blood levels went up. High. Higher. Yeah. Not lower. Not lower. Now, yeah. that's counterintuitive. Yes. But that... But that still speaks, she didn't talk about this, but the only reason I can think of is that women have receptor sites that do something different with testosterone than men. So like, just like when we have, um, we have testosterone, we, we have a different hair loss with if we have so much testosterone and oral testosterone, it'll make you have hair loss here, but men have hair loss in the front. So we have different receptor sites in our scalp. Yeah. And I'm only talking about non-pellet testosterone and really, really high doses. So that can cause a different picture in men and women. So we have different receptor sites, which gives the picture dif a difference. It's genetic. So this so, is, for men, their voice goes down when they, when they get testosterone. For us, it doesn't. But this is one precise measurable component regarding one issue. I mean, there are audiologists, there are speech therapists. I don't know if you've ever watched The, the King's Speech, which is a great movie. Mm -hmm. uh, people that have speech issues, that have pronunciation uh, issues, framing and shaping of syllables issues, articulation, all of that stuff is measured by different scientists for different reasons, and there are treatments for it. What we're talking about is a very, very specific thing. The myth out in the community that if a woman takes testosterone replacement hormone as she ages, it will do something to her voice quality, it will change it, and that's permanent. The research shows that it almost never goes down, and in this mm -hmm. data, in this particular sample group, mm -hmm. did not go down for anybody. Mm -hmm. 
a couple of people went up just microns. And that's reversible. If you come off of the testosterone, you don't take it anymore. Under the measurement, your voice would go back exactly where it was before. Mm -hmm. So if that's a concern, if you're using your voice in a professional way, that can be determined. What's the degree of change? Are you okay with that? Does that impact your sense of your delivery? Does that impact the way people hear you? And if you are concerned that it does, <clears throat> it's reversible. You just reduce the testosterone dose until you get in the zone where you want to be. But if that's not a concern, if it's not an appreciable difference to you professionally or personally, then it's not a big deal. Voice cracking was at the very end. You yeah. know how, how teenagers have voice cracking? Mm -hmm. They said that it's dose dependent, it's reversible, but they do see voice cracking with testosterone. Okay. So it's do, it's dose dependent. So you have so, to lower the dose. So that might be dose. going through puberty again. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have your voice crack if you're a female, kind of like a puberty change. And I've had yeah. people tell me that. And we lowered their dose and it went away. Okay. And then I've had other people say, don't lower my dose. I feel great. I don't care if my voice is cracking. All right. I want my dose. Well, but that goes back to the whole choice about the baby thing yes, that you were saying. Right. Uh -huh. Would I trade that off as a consequence mm -hmm. for this? Mm -hmm. That's so. right. And so, so we just want to dispel the myth so that you don't worry about it, that you don't um, n refuse testosterone treatment, which is going to help you in so many different ways and help your symptoms and also prevent illness in the future. We want you to think, okay, so this is something reversible. I can try it. I can decrease dose. It probably isn't going to uh, lower the pitch of my voice anyway. Well, so, and, and a question to ask yourself, you know, if, if the options are I cannot take testosterone, I can have osteoporosis and, and I'll suffer falls and bone breaks more loss readily. Loss of muscle mass. Uh, or me, or a, medicines with a lot of side effects. Home. Exactly. <laughs> or have a voice change. And a, mar a minimal one, a marginal one, would I make that choice? Because those uh, are more serious questions about your health than what we've found the evidence shows about changes in your voice. So That's be right. aware of that, mm -hmm. please. Think about it. Make it make good educated decisions. Educated decision. Yeah. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.